Hey guys, it is Aoife from Fred We See Died Laughing and I'm here with another weekly wrap up. I finished five books this week and I cannot wait to tell you all about them. The first book that I finished was a library book but I've since brought it back and it was The Waking Land by Callie Bates. Um, this is a YA fantasy book um, I talked about briefly last week and it is basically about a girl who when she was five years old was taken by the king um, of the kind of the the country that she's living in um, but her father actually opposed this king he didn't really believe in this king and he wanted to set another man um, on the crown and because of this the um, the king took his child to kind of try and control him and she ended up growing up in this kind of I guess this enemy court um, and then when she's 19 years old she ends up getting accused um, of treason um, and accused of things that she hasn't done and she ends up being rescued by men that belong to her father and for the first time since she was five years old she's brought back to her basically her land of birth the place where she has was supposed to have grown up in a place where she has um, a very very special connection to and she's meeting her father and her mother for the first time since she was five years old um, and she is kind of has to learn how to kind of be their daughter again and try and reconnect with them um, and while all of this is going on she kind of comes into these powers she's always had these powers but they were stifled because she was living in this court and she had to keep it a secret because people didn't like magic um, and now that she's kind of a bit more free and she's back to this land that she has the connection with these powers are kind of coming back full force um, and it's kind of this very very special power that is connected to the land and she can kind of awaken the land and talk the land and kind of make nature like do different things to help protect her people and you know protect her um, and she has a very special status um, in the um, basically within her family and within her own kind of little kingdom and um, because of these powers um, and it's like this book kind of follows her um, helping with this kind of I guess this rebellion in a way um, and how she kind of just the kind of the growth that she experiences in learning about herself, the truth of herself um, and really coming to terms with who she is and what she can do. Um, and I really, really, really enjoyed this book. I gave it a really solid four out of five stars. Um, I thought the world building in it was fantastic. I really enjoyed the world it was it was set in. Um, I really, really enjoyed um, Elle's character development. She kind of starts out as this, she almost seems like, uh, like a tiny bit spoilt in a way because she's been doted on by this king who she should really hate but he kind of ends up becoming a father figure to her and she's been a little bit spoiled by him um, through in different ways um, and she has a bit of a she has kind of a resentment towards her real parents for letting her go um, and we kind of see her we kind of see her dig through all those feelings and kind of I feel like she was very mature about a lot of the things she did eventually I kind of was afraid she'd become kind of this prissy little princess kind of character but she wasn't at all she really stands up for what she needs to do um, and even though she knows she's kind of a little bit conflicted in her own heart she still kind of knows what the right thing to do for her people are so she doesn't kind of let her own kind of personal feelings and judgments get in the way of what she has to do for other people at times and I really really loved that and um, I really loved the there was a love relationship in this and at first I felt like maybe it was going going on too fast but then as we got through more of the book I kind of just accepted it because I just thought the characters gelled really really well together and I ended up really really liking their relationship um, and I just loved those little moments they had together um, when you know they kind of are forgetting about all the other troubles and all the other battles that were around them that they could kind of take these quiet moments together to kind of just be a, a couple and I just really really enjoyed that I thought it was really really cute um, and this kind of ends where it could easily be a standalone and you could end it there and I think could be really really happy with how the story went for me. But as far as I can see in Goodreads there is going to be another book um, and I'm really really intrigued to see what this book will be about. I think it will have something to do with the magic and something to do with witch hunters. That is my guess but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but if that is the case then I'm very excited to see where it goes um, and I'm really excited to carry on with Elle and see just the, more of the journey she takes within her own powers um, and her own kind of character development and I think it'll be really really great to see. So yeah a four out of five stars really enjoy this and I really recommend it for anyone who is looking for a very well written mature YA fantasy. The next book I read was Sovereign by April Daniels. This is the second book in the Dreadnought series which is about um, a trans girl called Danny who becomes a superhero um, and when Danny becomes a superhero she basically is passed on this mantle by this dying superhero called Dreadnought um, and he passes on the mantle to her uh, which ends up making her physically um, 
a girl even though she's always been a girl because she's a trans girl but it makes her phys make makes her appear completely physically a girl without any surgery or hormones or anything like that um, and she has to go up against a lot of prejudice because she is a trans superhero um, and we see it we saw a little bit of it in Dreadnought but a lot of Dreadnought was more of daddy just coming to terms with her powers and learning, learning how to use her powers where in Sovereign I think we see a lot more of Danny's own fight I guess um, in terms of giving trans people a voice in a way and giving trans superheroes or you know superheroes that are LGBT, LGBTQIA plus like a voice um, and she's kind of needs to kind of be the voice to say well I'm not the only one there's so many more of us um, and we see her really really working through that Um I kind of had a bit of an up and down relationship with this book. I loved Dread, not the first one. Um, I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars, I think, or like a 4.5 out of 5 stars. With this one, I don't know. I don't know whether it was the mood I was in when I was reading the book. I was a bit like scatty or something. Um, but I couldn't really focus on the first half of the book really, really well. And I should have because I had a lot of things I would have really enjoyed. Like she went to a superhero convention at one point, which is just like awesome, so cool. And she was able to see other superheroes. Um, and there's, there's like a lot of superheroes in this world, by the way. Um, or a lot of meta-humans, I should say. Um, but um, yeah, I just, for some reason, Danny just really annoyed me in this book. Um, or for like the first half of this book, the second half, she was fine. But the first half, she really bugged me a lot because I felt like she got really, really cocky. Um, as Dreadnought and I felt like she was kind of not listening to the people around her and she felt like she could do things way better because she was Dreadnought and she had this super strength and you know she could fly and all this and I was like no but like slow down and listen to the people who've been doing this longer than you because you know you've literally only been doing this for like six months or something like stop um, and she just got a little bit annoying for me um, but I think maybe as I think she annoyed me as Dreadnought but as Danny, I liked her Um this did I felt like this one moved way quicker than the first one as well like it was kind of felt like there was like one thing after another um, and the second half it was really really great as I said I thought the kind of the villain plan at the very end of this book was absolutely terrifying I thought it was a really really like creative idea um, and a really cool idea and I just really loved seeing how that came about and then how uh, Dread not tried to fix it um, I also really enjoyed this that there is a lot of emphasis on kind of um, Danny's mental health um, being a superhero and having to see a lot of things and having to do a lot of things that like she might not ne necessarily want to like in terms of being very rough with people and how that kind of affects her own mental health and her nightmares and you know some of it isn't even directly related to being a superhero some of it is, de is related to her relationship with her parents which we see in the first book is not a good one and I really enjoyed at the end near the end of this book where she really was saying like she was going to go and you know go to therapy and get help and take a break and really work through her own issues like before she could go off and you know really become the dreadnought that her city needed um, and I just thought that was so refreshing I thought it was really really good message to put across that you know it's okay to take those breaks for yourself and um, you know you have to look after yourself before you can look after other people there's no point in looking after other people if you yourself are a mess um, and I just really really enjoyed that um, so overall I know I think the first half of this book would have been a three out of five stars and the second half would have been a four out of five stars so I think overall I'll give it like a 3.5 3.75 stars um, but like a 3.5 stars I think really um, I don't know if there's going to be a third one in this I think there is going to be a third one um, and I'll be really looking forward to that I'll definitely be reading it. The next book I read was also a library book I've also since brought it back because I finished it in like a day this book was really really quick um, to read it was very short um, and this was Ganeshar Ganoshar by Vivek Shambag did I say that right? Shambag Vivek Shambag um, and this is a book from an author from India. It's one of his first translated works. He has like loads of stuff written um, in a particular Indian language, um, which I cannot remember the name of right now. But this is basically about, it's been told by this one man and he's come from a family who used to be, like they weren't like really, really, really poor, but they were they were poor enough. Um, you know, they were kind of living off every single bit of their, the father's wages, um, you know, and 
they weren't living like the most well off life and then their uncle sets up this business and they basically become very not very rich but they become a lot more rich than they were um, and he's kind of talking through kind of their lives in a way and he's kind of talking about different ways he feels that maybe coming into this money wasn't necessarily a good thing for the entire family and while they were a lot more comfortable now with their riches um, they aren't necessarily happier um, and I just really enjoy the kind of the exploration of that even though this is a really really short book into this one family and the different ways that you know the money is kind of changed them and in ways that he believes that certain things would have gone differently if they didn't have that money if they were still just like you know relatively poor Indian family um and yeah it was just really like I can't say too much about this because it's not not like there's like this big massive plot it's really just this guy telling you about his life and telling you about his family and kind of his own opinions about his family um but I really really enjoyed this um I really enjoyed the writing I thought the writing was wonderful I definitely would have liked it to be longer I definitely will read more of Mimek Shambag's work if it gets translated because I just really enjoyed the whole tone throughout this story I gave it a four out of five stars and I will definitely be reading more of Mimek Shambag's work the next book I read I finished this morning and it was Sensation um, Adventures in Life Love and Laughter by Isabel Losada. this is a book I got off Neck Alley this is a non-fiction book um and this this one is a really really interesting one Um, I'm just going to try and figure out the best way to kind of word everything that I want to word about this book because I just think it's a very I feel like it's a book that a lot of women should read and um, this is basically the author Isabel's own kind of adventures into figuring out how to basically get the best pleasure she can when it comes to her sex life um, and she kind of explores these different things that like these different workshops and these different methods when it comes to kind of um, female pleasure um, and she goes through to a lot of them with her partner who she just calls T in the book he's anonymous but we we just know him as T um, and it's just these different things that they work on together some things she works on separately um, and I just thought it was a really 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 great look into female pleasure and um, the stigma around talking about sex about being open about sex um, about the stigma of women enjoying sex as well. I'm not sure if I've ever read a book that was more focused basically on the female orgasm as this book um, and I just thought it was, I just found it absolutely fascinating to be honest and I just loved the different things that she talked about. She was very very honest about different things and um, she you know a lot of these things that she went through sound like you know if you were in that situation be like no way would I be able to do this. She makes it all like very fun and she's very honest about the different things she has to do when she was in these workshops. This is just one of those books I definitely would want a lot of my female friends to read especially any of them who are in a long-term relationship maybe or um, in a, a strong relationship where they would maybe like to work with their partners to kind of get as much pleasure for the two sides um, in the relationship and I would just be really interested to see what other women got out of this book in comparison to what I got out of it because I just thought it was really great and I just really really enjoyed it. I really enjoy these kind of books um, because I feel like there's stuff that is still as I said there's still a real stigma around all of this and I feel like it's something that should be talked about more um, or should just be discussed more and figured out more and um, like it's not wrong to try and you know get as much pleasure as you can in your sex life the way you know it's a lot easier for men than it is for women so I do do think that this is something that you know more women should be aware of they should be aware of how to be the happiest they can be basically um, and yeah I just really enjoyed this and I would definitely recommend it if you are um, interested I gave this a four out of five stars and I really enjoyed it and the last book I finished I fin finished right before I started do, uh, doing this video was Solar Bones by Mike McCormick this is a book that was long listed for the Man Booker Prize this year um, and this is a kind of literary fiction um, set in Ireland set in Mayo in Ireland and it we're basically just being told this by this man called Marcus Conway and he is just kind of telling us about his life, about his family, about his job, about his children and um, his marriage and we're just hearing all these different kind of thoughts from him like sometimes like he'll kind of it's like this really big long tangent because there's no actual full stop in this book and um, not even at the end there's not even a full stop at the end yeah um, and uh, I just thought this was a really beautiful lovely book Um, I don't know I don't know what to say about it because I don't want to like 
I think that's one of those ones you just have to read to figure out for yourself if it's something you would like or not because I wasn't really sure going into it and there were definitely parts of this book that I was a bit like oh like come on like I don't want to know about like I don't know like there's some stuff he went he was going on about like stuff like um different things that were going on in politics and things that were going on he's like a civil engineer with the county council I presume or with the council anyway in his area um, and some of the stuff he was going on about like I did understand it in a way but I was just kind of okay like some of this is a bit boring like get back to your family I really enjoyed when he talked about his relationship with his wife and um, his relationship with his father his uh, his relationship with his children then um I enjoyed a lot of that um and there were some really really nice passages in this there was one that I just thought was lovely it was near the end um, and I thought it would be a nice one to kind of read out to kind of give a sense of what the writing is like. I think if people like Donald Ryan, um, they might like this book. Um, just that sense of this Irishness, this little Irish town, the, I guess it's like the smallness of being Irish in a way because it's so tight knit community kind of thing. Um, that's what I feel about this book. But. I really enjoyed it, um, but I wanted to read out this one passage about when he, he's talking about when he's in a coffee shop, and I just really liked this one kind of paragraph. Um, he says, I was overwhelmed with the sense of what a strange privilege it was to be able to sit in this coffee shop among other people who did not wish me any harm and who would, more likely than not, be happy for me if they were to know that I was having a good day, that my wife was on the mend and that my car had started and that this was a tasty sandwich and that the sun was shining outside. None of these people would begrudge me any of this and all would appreciate the expert way the sandwich was put together and how everything about it revealed a degree of attentiveness which went beyond mere ex expertise and spoke something of a care and commitment which was gently humbling. So unexpected and baffling also to come across something so banal which filled me with a sense of how improbable life was and how this unlikely construct, a sandwich for Christ's sake, could communicate such intimate grace that I was now completely overtaken with a foolish excess of gratitude for this half hour in this coffee shop, a quiet spell among decent people, good food and the careful work of those who ran it. And I just thought that was really nice. I, yeah, I just really enjoyed that little passage, that, that particular like page and um, was really good. Like I can't like, as I said, like everything is kind of a bit disjointed in a way. Like he has sentences and they go back, they suddenly go into the next line and the next line and the next line. So there's no way of, in terms of really knowing where to stop when you're reading passages out, I guess. Um, would really love to see maybe how he reads this out um, if he does any readings and um, that would be really really interesting but I did really enjoy this I really enjoyed the writing and I think um, as I said with a few other authors in this wrap up I will definitely read more of Mike McCormick's work because I just really enjoyed the Irishness of his of his novel I just enjoyed the general the family life it was just really really nice um, and I gave it a I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars because as I said there was some bit that I was a bit like ugh with um, but I did overall really enjoy it and the last 20 or so pages I thought were wonderful I really really liked them really enjoyed how it all kind of ended up um, and yeah uh, 3.5 out of 5 stars but would really recommend and I think it's one of those that you just need to try out for yourself to see if you like the style of it or not so that is everything I have read this week. Please let me know what you guys think, what you are reading, if you've read any of the stuff that I have read, all the usual kind of things, and I will see you guys again next time. Bye!